हेलो व्यूवर्स आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू शेयर और सी हक्सलीज व्यूज ऑन वाई नॉट स्टे एट होम वेरी वेरी कैच ई टाइट लाइक एम अक्रॉस दिस एस्टडे एंड आई थॉट आई शुड रीड एंड शेयर द आइडियाज विद अदर्स ऑल्सो बिकॉज ही इज टॉकिंग इट्स दिस इज अ वेरी रेलिवेंट क्वेश्चन एट दिस कोविड नाइन्टीन पीरियड बिकॉज एवरीबडी इज सो रिलेक्ट इन टू स्टे एट होम एंड दे वॉन्ट टू गो ऑन अ टूरिज्म और दे वॉन्ट टू स्टे आउट दे फील दैट दे मिस समथिंग so i too always uh, feel when they uh, say that uh, uh, we have to stay at home because uh, uh, because of covid the spread of uh, covid 19 um, uh, people uh, grumble and they feel sad about it of course i am also sad that students miss a lot uh, learners miss a lot but at the same time um, uh, people are so obsessed with uh, traveling Uh, tourism and going out for enjoyment so at this uh, time this uh, uh, topic is very very relevant very pertinent so i thought why not i share the ideas given by huxley in this essay with my viewers uh, uh, of course huxley all this huxley is a novel british novelist poet short story writer essayist social critic and a great intellectual uh, he was born in the year 1894 at surrey and um, is the grandson of thomas aldous huxley uh, who was a celebrated victorian uh, biologist uh, he is a grand nephew of matthew arnold uh, he is uh, his father was leonard uh, huxley who was a writer and a journalist and his brother julian huxley was also a noted uh, writer and uh, popularizer of uh, science uh, thus uh, uh, he was born in a very uh, intellectual family uh, so he has inquired and also acquired the beauty of both uh, uh, literature uh, and also science arts and science uh, he wrote poems novel uh, novels satirical uh, is a very uh, satirical uh, novelist uh, uh, fictionist point counterpoint a very uh, famous one and in the year 1932 uh, he wrote, he has uh, uh, achieved a great thing by writing a science fiction brave new world uh, 1936 um, ailes in gaza uh, marks a transition of the satirist to the philosopher uh he laments the loss of spiritual values in the contemporary society and in the year 1946 a uh, very famous work uh, the perennial philosophy uh, he attempts at a synthesis of uh, religions to distill out one which would provide the world with a panacea for all its ills uh, very excellent uh, work and uh, uh, as um, Uh, Huxley uh, as late late motif uh, uh, is this: uh, We do not know how to control the use of what we know. This is his late motif. I repeat it: We do not know how to control the use of what we know. Very beautiful and Erudi um, uh, Murhin. Uh, uh, he says. Uh, um, Uh, Huxley is was a scientist and an artist in one. That is uh, true in his case. We'll go to the essay. Uh, why not stay at home? Uh, here he is talking about the different types of tourists, and uh, here he starts the essay by talking about people uh, who travel. He's he's talking about a cure variety uh, of reasons for which people go on traveling, and here he says some travel on business, some in search of health, and some for pleasure. So three uh, types like uh, business, uh, health reasons, and for pleasure. And Huxley is pointing out that it is the pleasure seekers. Uh, who fill the pockets of the proprietors of grand hotels uh, and uh, uh, he says but uh, he is asking the question do they derive any real pleasure in traveling 
um, as they claim and uh, he gives uh, an emphatic uh, no yes uh, they do not get any real pleasure as they claim this is uh, huxley's point uh, point of view and uh, here he says uh, uh he he also gives reasons for that he says that uh, uh he has seen much brighter faces uh, at a funeral than in the pizza of saint marks and uh, he say the famous uh, church in venice uh, which was visited by thousands of people every year and uh, then why do people uh, uh, take the trouble of traveling huxley is asking this question why do they take the trouble of uh, traveling and his answer is they do it uh, out of mere snobbery and uh, traveling provides them with a good topic for conversation once they come back and in the essay uh, he talks about he gives the example of epicurus uh, epicurean philosophy says eat drink and be merry that is the epicurean philosophy and here he says even epicurus who never traveled except when he was uh, banished sought in his own garden uh, our tourists seek abroad so epicurus was able to get pleasure at his own garden but our travelers try to get it abroad so do they find their happiness and here huxley is uh, asking that question rhetorical question which means no the answer is there no they do not and here he says tourists in the main a very gloomy looking tribe he is uh, uh, defining them uh, tourists are in the main a very gloomy looking tribe and uh, here he says once they return home they think the majority of the tourists they are, they look very really happy and uh, um, but while traveling they have such a lot of problems and here uh, he continues uh, the fact is that very few travelers really like traveling is yes, why do they find it difficult though they go on they they go on a pleasure trip uh, they are not happy it's because they do not really uh, like traveling and uh, if they go to the to the trouble and expense of traveling it's not so much from curiosity for fun or because they like to see things beautiful and strange as out of kind of snobbery it's not for fun it's not for uh, uh, liking to see something beautiful it's not out of curiosity but because it is a kind of snobbery people go on traveling that is what he says and uh, he says people travel for the same reason as they collect works of art he is making satirically he says that some people have the habit of collecting arts and people go on traveling also these two people do it because the best people do it they have that uh, fancy that best people if we are if we call ourselves best people we must do these two things a collection of arts or go on traveling and go on traveling so here uh, huxley is satirically uh, pointing out that he says that to to ha- to have been at certain spots on the earth surface is socially connect and having been there one is they feel if we go to a particular spot uh, we feel uh, we are uh, superior to those who have not gone there that is the concept that they have and moreover traveling gives one something to talk about one when they get home that is another point is yes? and the snobbery and uh, because it gives us a conversation to talk about when she, once they return home so to justify the snobbery a series of myths he is talking about the myths that are uh, fabricated around this concept of uh, traveling and he says a series of uh, myths had gradually been elaborated and uh, here he says uh, like so many fabled babylons and baghdads many fables related to babylons and baghdads there is also fables related related to paris and uh, monte carlo so uh, uh, people think of uh, the travelers uh, imagine uh, the fables believe the fables and imagine uh, about the merit of the travelers and uh, they travel to such places and they think that it is greater or they feel superior 
rather than staying at home uh, traveling they feel uh, more enormous big by traveling and uh, only thing uh, huxley says that they pay the uh, proprietors and the steamship nothing more than that they are not going to get anything because of the fables they go on traveling and here huxley is satirically pointing out that they are spending their money only to pay the proprietors of the hotels and the steamships the uh, travel conveyance charges and next he says it is for the sake of the myths and less consciously in the name of snobbery so because of the myth and because of uh, the snobbery they left their homes to admit disappointment in the reality would be to admit their own foolishness in having believed the fables while traveling they realize that it's their own foolishness for having uh, believed in the uh, fables and uh, uh, and also have undertaken this pilgrimage they grumble they feel they realize that they have done something foolish in undertaking this travel and then uh, uh, he is talking about uh, uh, he is giving an incident of a saddest sight that he has ever seen uh, he is talking about uh, paris uh, in uh, paris montmartre uh, he he saw three young american girls um these girls have taken a trip to this particular place and simply sitting in the bar quite unattended they are taking one sipping only lemonade and the whole the jazz uh, uh, satirically he is giving a picture of that situation portrays the jazz band played on monotonously the fired drummer nodded over his drums uh, the saxophonist yawned into his saxophone Uh, in couples in staggering groups uh, the guests departed but grimly uh, indomitably in spite of their fatigue weakness in spite of the boredom uh, which so clearly expressed itself on their charming and ingenuous faces the three young girls sat on so they didn't enjoy anything simply sitting the whole day they were still there when i left at sunrise the whole night they were sitting like that without talking without chatting without enjoying anything just monotonously uh, sitting there what stories i reflected they would tell when they got home again and how envious they would make their untraveled friends paris is wonderful this is what they will just tell they cannot say anything more than that because they did not enjoy simply uh, sitting and here he says that when they return home what what else can they say except this uh, statement that paris is wonderful so he is making fun of such people who uh, simply go and sit instead of sitting at home they go and sit at paris at a big hotel spend money uh, waste time and energy uh, and then uh, he, he is talking about to the parsians uh, the fable brings in several uh, travelers spend much and uh, who are who are benefited the parsians are people who are in paris uh, they gain a lot of money because of this fable in several hundred milliards of good money they give it a, a, a generous publicity and uh, uh, finally uh, huxley says business is business it's like a business going on uh, nobody is uh, benefited except the patients or the uh, the spot is yes, the, the people in that spot and um, um, with the with the not only paris and uh, uh, monte carlo he is making a uh, mention of the resorts of pilgrimage like uh, rome and florence and here he says there are picture galleries churches and ruins as well as shops and casinos and the snobbery which uh, decrees that one must like art uh, to be more accurate that one should have visited the places uh, where the art is to be seen is almost according to huxley is tyrannous and here he says that Uh, one who visit the places uh, they they have this idea that if you visit such places you are uh, full of life uh, they imagine this way and uh, uh, he is uh, hitting at them is uh, the fable and also uh, go on a pilgrimage just to see the uh, ruins and the churches 
then he uh, he is giving example here also uh, um, one afternoon ex excursion was arranged uh, to the island of torcello and one uh, that is only uh, there were only seven or eight uh, uh, tourists and uh, he saw one strong minded american couple when they went to a uh, uh, a uh, quarter a mile away church uh, the couple one american uh, strong minded couple they refused to get down from the ship the steamer they simply sat there because they considered another church to be very uh, popular uh, famous uh, and so they didn't want to go to this church so they the whole time they sat in the uh, uh, ship in the boat and here he says uh, uh, when they were return home uh, uh, the only thing that they can say is paris is wonderful uh, that's what huxley huxley says and uh, uh, by such travelers who go on plash pleasure seeking uh, he says that uh, it it gives uh, uh, money you know, several hundred uh, uh, milliards uh, uh, of good money to parsians and here he says uh, anyhow uh, business is business that is what is uh, going on uh, that is prosperous business is prosperous and not only to paris and monte carlo people uh, go as a resorts of pilgrimage but also to rome and florence they the mere like the snobbery of collection of arts he says that they visit uh, places uh, and here <laughs> huxley says that this is tyrannous both are tyrannous and here he says uh, uh, they have this uh, belief that they see life in such places um, and then uh, he's talking uh, he's uh, talking about uh, pilgrims or an afternoon excursion that he went uh, with nearly seven or eight tourists and uh, he's talking about a, an american couple who are uh, strong minded when they uh, stopped uh, uh, the place that is a uh, actually the excursion was taken to the island of torcello and after some time they um, uh, they stopped nearly a place called uh, uh, near a church and these people uh, this are uh, strong minded american couple they didn't get down because they thought that uh, another um, church is more famous uh, than this so they thought they can go there and they wasted their time sitting there in the Uh, motor boat and here huxley says that uh, it seemed to me rather a melancholy thing that they should uh, have come all the way and spent all the money merely for the pleasure of sitting in a motor boat and wasting that time so people don't realize that and here he says such people you know, travel only because they do not uh, st- they cannot stay at home that is the reason and uh, uh, here he says they are not genuine travelers Uh, they are not uh, born, uh, born travelers also so here um, they travel only for the sake of convention not for anything and uh, when they return also uh, they come because of uh, um, they go on traveling because of uh, uh, fables and fantastical hopes but they return only to be disappointed and uh, then he talks about genuine travelers and here he says um, Uh, they do not uh, the genuine travelers do not believe in uh, fables they do not travel because of uh, such fables uh, but uh, they are insatiably curious and uh, they, uh, he loves what is unfamiliar uh, for the sake of unfamiliarity and uh, he takes pleasure in every manifestation of uh, beauty uh, it would be absurd according to huxley he says that uh, um, uh, that he is never bored Uh, of course uh, tourist a large part of almost every day is necessarily empty uh, when when at home we do work uh, we take le- leisure or enjoy things and do uh, assorted works but uh, when we go on traveling he says necessarily uh, some part of uh, uh, the day will be left uh, empty and uh, here he says uh, uh, people will definitely get uh, bored of that and here he uh, gives as usual his uh, uh, comment uh, boredom is rather uh, uh, agreeable 
it's not agreeable they feel very bored uh, even if they don't have any uh, agenda on particular uh, as for particular hours or particular time and here he says they feel painful also why waste this time like that uh, they go on grumbling and here uh, huxley comments that it is a symbol of his liberty his excess of freedom he accepts his boredom when it comes not merely philosophically but almost with pleasure so that boredom also he has to accept the uh, genuine traveler accepts the boredom uh, but with um, almost with pleasure and then he talks about the born traveler for a born traveler traveling is a besetting vice besetting means harassing uh, troublesome like other vices uh, it demands the victim's time money energy and the sacrifice of his comfort and uh, it claims uh, and the born traveler gives willingly even eagerly uh, and uh, here he is making a digression on vices he says uh, we think uh, this is wise and uh, that is not there is no greater mistake than to suppose that a vicious life is a life of uninterrupted pleasure so this is what uh, huxley uh, says uh, he makes a comparison of the life of a christian of the christian and pilgrim's progress and the uh, um, ordinary traveler hardships uh, he gives a beautiful comment he says that uh, uh, in the case of the christian in pilgrim's progress he gets something out of his hardships uh, gets it here and now in the shape of a certain spiritual well being uh, to say nothing of what he may get in that sadly problematical uh, jerusalem beyond the river while the traveler gets nothing uh, except perhaps uh, gout and general paralysis of the insane he is satirically um, talking about both the christian and the traveler and then uh, he goes on uh, talking about the vice of traveling he says we will get two diseases it's not bodily disease that we get but the disease of the mind and also uh, the traveler become addicted to mental self indulgence these are the two diseases a traveler gets according to huxley and uh, he just goes on to compare traveling with the uh, reading and he says uh, both broaden it is supposed that both uh, reading and traveling broaden the mind stimulate imagination um, uh, are a liberal education this is what it said and uh, here he says uh, uh, we read uh, and travel not that we may broaden uh, and enrich our minds but that we may pleasantly forget that they exist and uh, he says we love reading and traveling because they are the most delightful of all the many substitutes for thought very beautifully he says that uh, substitutes for thought sophisticated and somewhat uh, uh, rarefied substitutes and that is why they are not every man's uh, diversion so very beautifully uh, huxley makes a comparison of reading and traveling and uh, here he says that uh, uh, there are people who travel with a purpose just as there are people who read systematically and uh, systematically he is talking about systematic readers uh, they have become very great but not always uh, desolatory readers that is and systematic readers also have become famous like uh, the case of dr samuel johnson the first man to write uh, a proper dictionary and uh, he read johnson dr johnson read everything that came under his hand and none to the end so uh, also there are travelers uh, huxley concludes that there are travelers who achieve very good results through though they wander about uh, aimlessly so in this essay uh, why not stay at home Huxley is uh, uh, pinpointing uh, that uh, we do not gain much pleasure in traveling we may uh, waste our time energy money and finally uh, what we the net profit is only disappointment and uh, while return while we return home uh, we cannot much uh, feel happy about it only 
find a conversation to talk about the places that we have visited to share it with our people uh, at home and uh, here so here he is asking uh, the essay is entitled why not stay at home so at this juncture uh, we must also ask this question everybody must ask this question why not stay at home unnecessarily we sh- we need not go out we need not go on traveling uh, whether it is for uh, uh, pleasure seeking or on pilgrimage we have to be very careful we should not be carriers uh, we should not uh, get uh, uh, the disease so we have to be very careful uh, uh, scientifically uh, we have to be very we have to protect ourselves so stay at home stay safe thank you